Florian Zeller, thank you so much for taking the time to meet with me today. Uh, first you. of all, I really want to congratulate you on six Academy Award nominations. I know this must be an exciting time for you and the cast and crew. Yes, it's a, it's a, it's a great joy. It's a pure joy. And I'm really grateful, really grateful to the Academy, especially I would say, you know, this year, I think it was not the, the easiest word, uh, year to have a, a film to be released. So to have in the meantime, this recognition means a lot. And it's like a wonderful gift. Well, we all hope that you take home all six Academy Awards. So there are over 50 million people in the world today who are living with dementia, and that number is actually expected to triple by 2050. So it's a very timely film. Uh, here in the West, we have the aging baby boomer population, many of whom are caring for parents who are now living with dementia, some of whom are worried about a diagnosis themselves. So there's something really universal about the, the appeal of this film, yet it's still somehow so deeply personal. And I'm, I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit about your connection to dementia and why this film was important for you to make at, at this time. It's true that at the very beginning, there was a connection with my own personal story, um, meaning that I have been raised by my grandmother and she was, my, she was like my mother and she was a very important person to me. And um, she started to suffer from dementia when I was 15 and I was living with her. So I knew a bit what it was to, to go through this painful process and to find yourself in a position where you are important in a way. You can love someone and you feel like love is not enough. But I also knew that it was not only my, it was not about myself, meaning that everyone had a grandmother or everyone has a father everyone has or will have to deal with this uh, painful dilemma, which is what do you do with the people you love when they are starting to lose their bearings. And that's the reason why I wanted to, to write that play and then to make that film. It was about, it was for, because I wanted to share those emotions. And, and, and you know, to tell you the truth, when I, when I wrote the play, I was not certain that the audience would be open to such an emotional journey. And I was really surprised and profoundly moved to, to discover that the response was really powerful uh, in France and then in many countries. And it was always the same, meaning that people were waiting for us after every performance, not to say congratulations, but it was to tell their own story or to share their own story. And I realized at this point, that there was something cathartic about it. Just to remember that we are not alone. You know, when you, have a, when you are going through a painful experience, you have the feeling that you are the only one in that position. And just to remember or to feel that we are not just individuals, but we are part of something larger than ourselves. It is meaningful. I mean, there is a consolation, I would say. And, and a beautiful one and a real one to remember that we are on the same boat. You know, this is fraternity. This is a painful fraternity, but still this is fraternity. And I think that art is done for that, to make you experience or remember that there is that connection between all of us. And uh, that's why I made the decision to make that film. Well, it's beautiful to hear you say that because one of the things that we deeply believe in is that nobody should have to walk that dementia journey alone. So let's talk a little bit about that journey, because I think uh, you spoke a little bit about, uh, about taking us on the audience on a journey. And so I think the expectation when you first uh, settle into the film is that you're going to be seeing things through the eye of the caregiver. And certainly the performance by Olivia Coleman is so deeply relatable and she's so incredibly beautiful in that role. And we experience deep empathy for her, but you've got a different journey in mind for us, and uh, you've got a different perspective for us, and you place us uh, in the point of view of Antony. Uh, so, at, you know, all at once, it's a it's it's disorienting for us. Yet there's something very interesting about seeing it through his lens. Why did you make the decision for us to be to see the world through his point of view? It's true that. There are many films about uh, dementia and they could be very moving films, but it's always a bit the same. You know, we know where we are and we know where we are going. And I wanted that film not to be a story 
or not only a story, but to be like an experience. The experience of what it could mean to lose everything, including your own bearings as a viewer. And, and so I wanted to put the audience in this unique position as if they were going through a labyrinth, questioning everything, doubting about everything, as if they were in the main character's head, as you said. And it was a way to experience this feeling of disorientation. And I thought that it was a way to, yes, to experience it from the inside and to have a more, more compassion about this condition. But also it was talking about cinema. I think it was something that was um, exciting, I would say, just to, to be in an active position, not, you know, not to just to sit and to watch a story already told, but to try to make sense, to try to, you know, it's like a puzzle. You can play with all the pieces to try to make it work. You're looking for the right combination. And when it doesn't work, you can feel frustration, you can feel rage, uh, anxiety. I mean, and, and this is what those people are going through. You know, sometimes they could be cruel uh, and in a minute they could be very frustrate, frustrated. And we suddenly, we experience that, you know, because we are fighting to make it meaningful, you know, and, 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 and the journey of that disease is also a fight, you know. There's anxiety when you understand that something doesn't work anymore and most of the time the, at the beginning you know the early stage stages there are these fights you know and the moment comes when you have to to let it go and this is also what i wanted the the audience to experience because as i said it's like a puzzle you try to make it work you try to make it work and who is this character and that said, scene is it before or after and it never works entirely because there is always a piece of that puzzle that is missing and it's done on purpose because the moment comes when you have to accept that your brain is not capable to understand everything and in a way you have to to let it go and and when you do so when you let it go i think you can understand the whole story on, a, on another level which is a more emotional level and this is where i wanted to go it was the destination of that film. I wanted that film to lead to this place where the brain is not capable, but the connection between the characters, love is still here and it is meaningful. And this is what I wanted to explore. Well, it was a, a beautiful and a, an effective exploration uh, because I think everybody comes out of that film feeling changed and feeling as if they have some insight into the experience of someone living with dementia. And, you know, it's interesting because I think anybody who's, who's has knowledge or experience of dementia can, can relate to so many of the scenes that you put in there, the lost watch, repeatedly losing the watch, the hiding it and, and assuming others have taken it and the, the painting is it or is it not on the wall. And through much of the film, you know, Anthony's, he's, he's distressed. He's clearly an intelligent, successful person. And he's, he's very distressed. But there's one scene in the movie that he, where he's, he's clearly not distressed. In fact, he seems happy. And he's, it's when he's standing at the window and he's looking out on the street and there's a young boy on the street and the young boy is, is playing with a, with a bag in the wind. And he's in the moment and it's so, it's so beautiful and serene and it almost gives the viewer a little bit of respite as well. And I'm wondering, why was it important to you to put that scene in the film? It's, um, I could tell you so many things about that scene. It's, it's less than one minute, but it's, it's almost the only time we are outside of this apartment, you know, because it's, it's, it's always in this apartment when you feel that the world is still living outside without you, you know, it's, it was about being isolated and alone. And suddenly you have this boy, we do not know if this is actually what he sees through the window or if it is a memory, if it, if it is a way to be reconnected with himself when he was a boy, the playfulness of life. And also the fact that life is going on, you know, despite everything and it's joyful and it's beautiful and it's very simple at the same time. And also 
it, the boy you just mentioned here is my son uh, as an actor. So it was a way, it's on a more personal level because the, father, the, the film is called The Father and it was a way to, to be a father uh, at that moment. And also because I, I was talking, I said I was connected with my grandmother but also I, I have also my own fears, you know? And, and it, when, you, when you think about your own fears, you think about your children, because, uh, you know, how you would be, you know, uh, alone or not alone with someone who cares for you or not. You know, when this so strange situation where someone is becoming the parent of his own parents, you know? And so it's about, generation so it, it was meaningful to me just to have like a poetic moment uh, at that point well it, it was it was beautiful to the viewer as well and uh, certainly that wasn't in the play uh, which i have seen as well so i i didn't i did notice it and and i i thank you for that moment because it it brings everything full circle and it it does speak to uh, as you say the fears that we that we have and the fact that we as uh, children do become the carers. And so, unfortunately, uh, that's all the time that we have today. Um, but I really just wanted to squeak in if I can. I know that dementia is such a stigmatized disease. And uh, you just went straight to the top to get the best, most stellar cast possible. And I know that you had Anthony Hopkins in mind uh, from the beginning. And I'm wondering if you can just speak briefly about that. About Anthony? Yes. Yeah, it's true that when I wrote the script, I had Anthony Hopkins in mind. And that's the reason why I, I wanted to do it in English, because as you can hear, I'm French. And uh, it was not an obvious decision to do it with him, but uh, I wanted so much to, to work with him because I think he's the, the greatest living actor. And also, you know, we know him through all his parts as a man always in control of the situation. And I thought that it was part of the journey I wanted to explore to see that man precisely losing the control, fighting to keep the control, and then losing the control. And uh, so that's the reason why I really wanted to, to do it with him. Well, thank you so much for the gift of this beautiful movie. And uh, it will go a long way in helping people feel connected to, to dementia and understanding that they're not alone. And I wish you all the all the best in the six Academy Award nominations. And thank you, thank much. you so much for your time. Uh, it was lovely chatting with you today. Lovely to chat with you too. Bye bye. <laughs>